Hi guys, in this session we're going to be covering um, square root expressions. As usual we'll be covering some basics first before we plunge into the depths. So, for those of you that haven't seen a square root symbol, this is what it looks like. And it usually has a number or a variable inside it. So in this case I'm going to say square root of 36. Now, understand that to find a square root of number we have to think of two numbers that are the same and that are go that's going to multiply to 36. So for example, the only two numbers that are same that multiply to 36 is 6 times 6. Which means square root of 36 can be written as square root of 6 times 6. Which means the number that, that we're looking for is 6. So, taking um, another example, if I take square root of 49 then that's going to equal 7. Or if I take square root of, let's say, 81, that's going to equal 9. Or if I take square root of 64, well, that's 8. And finally, let's take another number here, square root of 4, well, that's 2 times 2, so that's going to be 2. Now in saying that, one of the most common things people make mistakes and misunderstand is that with a square root of any number, you could also have its negative counterpart. Now I want to show this to you in the next, next slide. So let's go back to our square root of 36. So if you think about square root of 36, that's what we want to find out. But we know 36 is positive 6 multiplied by positive 6. But we also know 36 could be negative 6 multiplied by negative 6. So the answer for this particular question, square root of 36, that it could actually be positive 6 or minus 6. But in mathematics we always try and find little shortcuts here and there. So the easiest way to write plus or minus is that we write a plus and underneath it we write a little minus. And so square root of 36 is plus or minus 6. So if we take another example, if I say square root of 49, then this means that the answer could be plus or minus 7. And I guess the next part that we're going to go into is when we start taking square root of variables with powers. So the concept is that when you have square root it's been raised to the power of half. So if I have square root of x then this is simply saying x to the power of half. Now the reason is the square root symbol itself it means to the power of half. So whatever's inside the square root symbol is going to get raised to the power of half. So if you go back to this example of square root of x, um, I'm just going to write it down here. Now if you remember from our previous sessions, x when it's by itself, is ha it has a power of 1. So in this case, it's going to become x to the power of 1 to the power of half. And of course, 1 times half is simply x to the power of half. So, if we have something like square root of x to the power of 8, then this is simply saying x to the power of 8 times a half. Well, if you kind of realize how I jumped that step, because it's simply x to the power of, hang on, let's just try that again. Just going to rub this out. Let's say x to the power of 8 to the power of half, which means 8 times half. And you're going to end up with x to the power of 4. Okay. I'm going to do a few more examples like this in the next slide, uh, just so that we kind of get the hang of this. But basically, when you take a square root of a variable with a power, the power simply gets halved. So, if we have a look, if we take x to the power of 10, 
then this would become x to the power of 5. If you take x to the power of 8, this is x to the power of 4. If you take x to the power of 50, then this is x to the power of 25. If you take x to the power of 64, then you're going to get half of 64, which is 32. And that's basically the idea. You are taking any power it comes out to be, whatever it is, it's going to be half of it when you take square root of that particular variable. You might ask this question, well, are these sub things supposed to have plus or minus? Well, reality is, they are supposed to have plus or minus, but um, I guess I just forgot, and that's a common mistake people make. So really, x to the power of 4, square root of that, should be plus or minus x squared. Okay, on to the next slide with numbers and variables mixed in it. So... If we have square root of 49 x to the power of 8, this could be written as, well, square root of 49 we know is going to be 7, and square root of x to the power of 8, we have to halve the power, so it's going to be x to the power of 4. Of course, I forgot that this could be plus or minus. So the answer for this is going to be plus or minus 7x to the power of 4. Okay, another example. This time, let me see if I can try and get the right colors. We're going to have square root of 64 and x to the power of 12. Now, square root of 64, we know this happens to be plus or minus 8 and square root of x to the power of 12 we know that this is x to the power of 6 so the answer for this particular problem is going to be plus or minus 8 x to the power of 6 so what happens when you have number and two different variables well nothing changes I mean these rules still apply regardless of how many numbers you have and how many variables you have so for our last problem, we are going to have square root of 81, x to the power of 8, and y to the power of 10. Now we know that square root of 81 is equal to plus or minus 9, and we know that square root of x to the power of 8 is equal to half of 8 is 4 and square root of y to the power of 10 is well half of 10 is 5 so the answer for this question is going to be plus or minus 9 x to the power of 4 well, let's try and keep it to the color scheme shall we x to the power of 4 and y to the power of 5. Hopefully with this session, guys, you guys understand how to simplify square root expressions. That's all from me for this session. Thank you for watching.